Hey guys, it's Malfoy here once again, and it's been a while since I've done a bow character, so it was definitely about time, and every time I try to make a bow character, I try to do something a little different, because if you just end up building the same sort of way, uh, you really won't be changing much in the bow lifestyle from league to league. So this one's going to be something pretty damn funky and a little bit different. Now, the Crimson Storm is the bow we've decided to utilize, and once again, at this point, we do know that it's pretty damn strong, and I wanted to do something just a little bit different for it as well. The bow gives you a large amount of additional physical based off of if an enemy is bleeding, very similar to how double strike works. So you get any sort of bleed, at least have some physical from your damaged um, skill, and then you can get a huge amount of extra physical from your bow attacks, and that will apply to just about everything. Uh, so you do want to have just a little bit of physical so you can still bleed stuff. Otherwise, a pretty popular way of doing this sort of stuff is to go fill, full fizz conversion into elemental so you can still bleed just a little bit and then uh, just have huge amounts of extra damage, stack some flat fizz and do a large amount of damage with whatever skill you choose. I, however, have gone the complete physical route here. So no elemental damage, no chaos damage. I am running Brutality. I am using Barrage with three Volley Fire Jewels. So Barrage is my clear skill. Barrage is my single target skill. And I've also got Vile Rain of Arrows and a ranged attack totem Barrage for additional single target as well. I have also gone ahead and used the Grithcall Chest, which I'll show you in just a second. That means you cannot have any spells. Uh, you cannot have any spells deal damage either and it is a pretty shit item to build around and I will uh, go over that when I can but long story short we can't activate any spells can't do any curses except for built-in curse on hit items and then as well as that you um, more or less just want to start building blood magic because your mana is completely useless so that's why I don't have any mana on this character my life bar is my mana bar uh, thanks to the blood magic node it does allow you to get a little bit more life than usual and then ultimately we just use hemophilias for a bunch of bleed explosions so that the build feels a little bit fresher uh, because with no heralds and no real explosions other than that, uh, it does feel kind of crap. So you've got hemophilias that help your um, clear, as well as giving you the satisfying pops. So I'll give you a demo of a map in just a second as well. And overall, it turned out to be what is actually a very respectable character. It is a Deadeye. I am based off of Chain, and so I have the Deadeye Chain Ascendancy, as well as using the Chain Gem for clear quite often, and then also got a Lucky Vial for an additional Chain on a Quiver. Ultimately, Barrage is very doable and uh, pretty respectable in this sense, but it's probably straight up worse than a Tornado Shot or a Rain of Arrows, and I'll give you that option as well if you'd rather try that out on this type of build. But the pure Fizz, or full Fizz, no Ellie, no Chaos, and Hemophilia type um, style over the Crimson Storm actually seems to be pretty viable and probably even worth doing. So. As a pure Reign of Arrows character, I think uh, just about anyone can get into this one and you don't have to use the growth calls because it's actually pretty bad, which I'll demonstrate uh, when we get down to how we build this character. And uh, it's really something a bit different from how to build a bow character. And I think it's definitely a choice you can make rather than the usual, where you just stack a bunch of flat damage or just go a bunch of um, conversion into elemental. And that might still be the way to go. And Scourge Arrow is probably still quite comfortably the best bow skill around by far but doesn't really matter if you can have fun doing this and still clear most of the game then that's all that really matters and so far i've had quite a lot of fun building this character and actually playing it I uh, haven't actually tested any real single target yet, haven't had a single Elder pop up yet, and uh, today I will definitely be running a uh, Uber Elder to at least see what my damage is going to look like. I think it'll be okay, at least to some extent, and will take some gameplay, but the idea behind the character was to kind of stay far shot from the Deadeye Ascendancy and avoid point blank. That doesn't look like it's going to happen unless I play Reign of Arrows, because for Barrage, I think I'm probably going to need to take point blank. Currently though, damage isn't too bad. So let's get into how I built the character and a few of the fine-tuning mechanics of the build. Now before I actually uh, show you any of the character off, I do want you guys to get a feel for what the build sounds like, because Barrage going on and on and on is a bit of a unique sound effect. And uh, I don't want you to be surprised by what you're hearing, but the hemophilia pops are really nice as well. So let's just do a quick little map here. 
uh, with um, a bestiary sort of shenanigan going on. So this is the chest, it's a growth calls and to the only thing I can use with it is a banner. So I have to unequip my chest, hit the banner button and then put it back on and it snapshots the chest, uh, the banner to stay on reserving 5% of my life. That's how I've been playing and uh, you can as well but um, like I said probably not worth doing this chest in the end. Let's just do a quick little bit of map stuff. Now you will have your Mirage Archer going off non-stop basically whenever you're near enemies and he can clear by himself pretty damn well. Uh, but the only issue there is that he does not trigger any bleed effects so he won't be adding to your hemophilia pops. And he does add quite a lot of sound to your gameplay. Which can definitely be annoying according to uh, some people let's just say from um, the stream the past few days. You can of course run without the Mirage Archer as well and then you're doing all of the damage. And it actually sounds a lot cleaner and the playstyle is very much doable as well. Uh, it's something I've kind of toyed with myself and done at times but the noise doesn't bother me all that much so I don't really bother with that uh, terribly often. And you can see that my health can ping pong around a bit and that is largely because I have a huge amount of um, life gain on hit through the barrage projectiles as well as um, a little bit of a leech too. So that's roughly a little bit of a map clear with the character. Now that's done, let's get into the character. Currently level 91 called another ZDPS bleed build, Z being zero. I was going to kind of build around bleed, but it just, it isn't a thing. So bleed is just an activator in this build for our damage. And that is largely because of the Crimson Storm bow. So you can see that it's got some decent stuff on it, but the biggest thing is a huge amount of extra physical 115 to 165 against bleeding enemies. Now that will go to your bow and uh, give a huge amount of extra damage. So it's a very powerful bow for a very cheap price. And then you can also maim things. You can get lots of uh, additional flask charges back too. So overall, you do get quite a lot of flask charges in this build when paired with the Poacher's Mark belt because Poacher's Mark gives you uh, a curse that gives you quite a lot of extra flask charges back as well as frenzy charges, some life gain on hit and some mana gain on hit too. And then the other item we're building around here is the Grithkull's Pelt. So a lot of life, good chunk of extra physical damage, some regen. And then the two downsides, spell skills deal no damage and your spells are disabled. So for everything else in the game, once you put on the growth calls, it will disable. For a banner, for some reason, it still works and um, it will stay enabled. So we do use Dread Banner here for some Impale chance. Uh, likewise with Aspects, Aspects of the Cat, for example. If you put that on and then put your chest on, it will stay up. Um, but you're going to have to reactivate it every single zone like I do with my banner and it is somewhat annoying and you can't really afford to lose another 10% life or some shit to an aspect. So if you want to keep using a growth calls you can uh, not spec into blood magic and then activate an aspect and a banner every single uh, time you zone into a map off of your mana and that's still something you can do but I'm here to tell you the chest isn't really worth doing and I don't recommend doing it like I have. Simply put you can use just a good fossilized chest instead with level one maim attached to it and then uh, you'll have more damage and much more uh, utility from your various shit. I just I've always wanted to build around this chest somehow and this is as close I can get to viability as possible and that's only because I'm still allowed to use a banner in sort of a cheese mechanic. Otherwise yeah not really worth doing like I mentioned if you'd rather you just fossilize a chest that has level one maim attached you get rid of the main link of maim here and then replace it with another link in this case it's probably going to be something like faster attacks but currently my link setup here is um Starting with Barrage, we have then Vicious Projectiles, Mirage Archer Support, Brutality, Maim, and then lastly Slower Proj or Chain depending on the map. For some maps I will want additional chains so that there's better spread against a lot more enemies, more pops, that sort of thing. 
Um, it's just for some more wide open maps. It does cut your damage a bit though. Uh, for some maps though, I'll just run slow approach so that all of the things I do hit a lot harder. Um, they won't have as many chains, but you don't really need them a lot of the time since uh, hemophilias do do some good popping of their own anyway. And uh, you just run around doing a bunch of barrages. And one of the cool funky things about a build like this is you do stick a lot of arrows in the wall. So just about every fight encounter zone you go up against, you do redecorate their walls and it's kind of funny to see. Now to synergize with the barrage, you do also have three volley fire jewels. So you don't need to allocate 40 dexterity as a friendly reminder. You just have to have 40 dexterity in the zone. So there's a... Um, for example, on this one, one, two, three, four. So that's 40 dexterity. And then it works to give you two additional projectiles. Now these projectiles do not go the same way as regular barrage does. So regular barrage tries to fire down the middle. Volley fire fires a couple extra out the side and that helps you with your clear speed, your spread. They will not apply to single targets. So volley fires are not a single target increase under any circumstance. Doesn't matter how close you're standing, how many arrows you think you are going to be hitting against a single enemy, volley fire doesn't affect the barrage single target damage. So we are running three of these so that you can get the maximum amount of extra clear speed going from it. So barrage in and of itself is a bit of an investment. You have to use three jewels. You have to try and get a bunch of additional arrows. And in this case, I've got a uh, barrage fires an additional arrow here. I've got a dying sun for two additional. And then this quiver that I made, which was with some chaos spam, I hit bow's attack bow attacks fire an additional arrow i then did get a slightly lucky vial to get additional chain on it and i know you don't need this bit of a meme whatever but uh you really don't need this it's not going to make that much of a difference and like i mentioned i'm already gimping my build by using growth call if you don't do that with a real chest instead and um something different you will have just the same amount of output as i do but currently plus one chain does help me a little bit if I was to try and make this the most effective build possible, I would not be using an additional arrow setup at all. I wouldn't be using growth call either. I would be using uh, rain of arrows, strictly speaking, because it is pretty damn good compared to barrage in these um, circumstances. Instead, you'd be running around doing this sort of play style. You'd still get lots and lots of pops. You'd still have very good damage and you wouldn't have to build around additional arrows at all. It'd be much lower on the gear requirement and it'd probably be better clear speed, better single target, and they'll also free up your jewels. So I'm trying to avoid Rain of Arrows because I'm trying to build around something a bit different, which is Barrage and uh, just something a bit I think possibly funner. So then we also have our five link uh, over here, which is barrage range attack totem over here attached to multiple totems. So I can have up to three of these guys and they do help my single target as well as my clear uh, in certain cases like delve nodes where you just put them down and they will help you clear as well. And then it's also vicious proj and brutality support. So you can have three totems by default without even specking into anything. And um, they do in total something like 400k DPS while my main barrage setup does about 550. So you can see it's pretty close to doubling your damage if you have all your totems down and all the arrows are hitting. So it's not completely worthless to have in the setup. Then running hemophilias with a corrupted 10 attack speed. So that's just for the explosions that make you um, feel a little bit better for clear speed and just aesthetics. Uh, besides that, the gear is nothing too outlandish. Just trying to get some life and uh, resist damage, fizz damage. Uh, did corrupt endurance charge on kill, which is a nice little or, you know, got a talisman corruption thing, which uh, is just a nice little bonus for defense, but by no means necessary. And then I also did an Elder Helmet so that I could get level 20 Conch Effect attached to my Vile Rain of Arrows, because that's Vile Rain of Arrows, Maim, Vicious Proj, and Brutality attached to level 20 Conch. Since this is an extremely low IQ build, um, I actually don't really need any int on the build except for multiple totems, 48 int. Uh, I can afford to not stack int for anything, but if I wanted conch effect, I would have needed some int. But the main thing I want to say with this one is that Vart Rain of Arrows seems like it can be used as at least a four link in uh, just about every bow build ever because it is just, it's a nice additional um, bunch of damage on a boss, just pure single target uh, that I have been using to supplement my current damage. So for every boss, every tough situation, every betrayal encounter, just throw down a hard hitting 
couple of Vile Reign of Arrows, and they can usually kill things all by themselves, but on top of that, you can then attack yourself as well. So I do recommend chucking a Vile Reign of Arrows into your bow builds. It seems pretty damn worth, and um, I'd definitely try it out, especially against Betrayal Encounters. Then the other funky thing I have is the Gluttony Belt. Uh, since I can't actually curse myself at all, uh, unless I have vulnerability corrupted on my gloves, I went with the Gluttony Belt for the Poacher's Mark, and uh, we don't really have any armor, so that doesn't matter at all. Uh, it also gives you Culling Strike, so it is a slight damage increase, but for the most part, we need to use Poacher's Mark so that we get Frenzies while we clear, so that we have a bit better Flask and Life Gain on hit happening, so I think it's worth using as a belt slot here. Uh, otherwise, there's a passive tree that is a little bit different because we do path over to Blood Magic. So you can grab all of that since I don't use any of my mana. And also I have Iron Grip, which is a bit different. And as well as that, I do have really good Leech. So I've got really good Leech and Life Gain on hit. And my life recovery is currently quite insane. If I stand still and shoot something, I'm just going to go from 0 to 100 just about instantly. So the more life you get, the better off you are to uh, actually defend against big hits because uh, you can recover them extremely quickly. My ascendancies in this one, Tailwind, of course, you can't not get that. And then Rupture, very good as well for um, this sort of a build. Other than that, you then have a few choices. And in this way, I did go the chain route. So I do have Ricochet at the moment for the additional chains with Barrage. And I'll probably end up grabbing Point Blank because uh, it's just too much damage to give up. So I'll have to have a more active face tanking playstyle. However, if you are something like Reign of Arrows instead, I would recommend grabbing Fast and Deadly and then probably Powerful Precision. Um, because chances are you're still grabbing point blank in that scenario too. When we go over to the path of building, you can see my current damage is about 500k um, against a shaper type targets. Now that's with this regular setup, but I do also have um, one that I'm going to show you in a second that is without the growth call, but this is the regular setup with the growth call with no real uh, fanciness, just if all your arrows hit, it's 500k. We also have our other barrage. This is the totem one, does about 300 at the moment, according to this. And then Reign of Arrows does something else as well. But a lot of our damage is coming from the bleed, as you can see, 500k currently there. Uh, if you tick no bleed, then half our damage is gone. So the bow is pretty important, and so is the rupture ascendancy. Now I will have probably a bit more damage than that because chances are I will be taking point blank like I said. So once you activate point blank you have to then projectile travel distance that and you will have about that much damage. So that's probably what it's going to look like in the end, something like that damage and it should be enough to take on most content. But if you want to look at the Reign of Arrows version of the build, which I would probably much more recommend with the Crimson Storm, this damage is uh, more than enough for all of the... Uh, uber elders and the tough stuff in the game because that's per arrow and Ren of Arrows hits a lot more than that. Uh, you can swap out all of your jewels for just any old bow jewels. You don't have to run the growth calls anymore. I'd recommend grabbing something like an assassin gub and then fossil crafting it with uh, I think it's serrated so that you can get level one maim on it or just buy one of those instead and then have a Ren of Arrows that is attached as your main link with Mirage Archer, Slower Proj, Level 1 Maim, so that's the built-in 7 link, uh, Vicious Proj, Conk, Brutality, Reign of Arrows, and then you respec a bit so that you're not actually using Blood Magic, and then you'll also um, actually have a few skills to use, something like Blood Rage, Herod of Purity, uh, you could probably run one of the banners, you could maybe do an Aspect of the Cat, Spider, um, it's pretty versatile at that point, so I don't want to tell you exactly how to build this, but this is a fairly decent template, and I can give you guys that um, included in the little build link as well. For now though guys, um, until next time when I go on against the endgame stuff, this will be the end of this video and this character for now. I'm going to try and take on some Uber Elder and some Deeper Delves. Up till yesterday, up till level 91, I had only died well, now I've died three times, but I died zero times at level 91. I was trying to do a full deathless run uh, up to Uber Elder, but uh, a few things did happen in some crazy maps, and ultimately I did die. I think it's hardcore viable though, by all means, and I think I might be able to get through a lot of the Guardians completely deathless as well as Uber Elder. So we'll see how it goes, but so far, character's been pretty solid. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.